Reflections on Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday for Marines and aspiring Marines alike. Also, I'll introduce a few new segments to the show. I am Simon the Zealot, and you're watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Greetings, Marines. In case you didn't hear it on Friday, I want to wish you a happy 242nd birthday. Before I give you my thoughts on the Marine Corps birthday, though, I want to acknowledge the other important holiday that happened this weekend, which was Veterans Day. Veterans Day started as a commemoration of the end of World War I, but has through the years become a celebration of all veterans. As I think about Veterans Day, it's obvious that some gratitude is in order to the men and women who have served before us. Regardless of their opinions and even of their willingness, they stood in the line of fire. Many fought and many died. I'm sure that many wanted to be elsewhere, but they filled the boots that needed to be filled, and we are here today because of them. The salient point in all of this is that good intentions cost nothing. It is the person who does the serving that deserves the praise. So a big thank you to all the veterans in peace and war. In many ways, we are standing on your shoulders. With that in mind, a special thank you goes out to the Marines who have gone before us and those serving now as we enter our 243rd year in the defense of our country and our Constitution. There is reason to be proud. The Marine Corps has produced some of the greatest victories and warriors in the history of the United States. The Corps has carried far more than its fair share in defending our way of life. But beware, we cannot hang on our laurels. Legacy does not float, it is carried. The quality of the book rises and falls with the latest chapter. As with warfare, I have long believed that Marines are uniquely positioned to disproportionately affect the world in all other arenas. Ferocious in attack, stalwart in defense. Disciplined and ingenious, there is no obstacle that a group of Marines can't overcome. Let me say this, the world needs principle. Right now, it is caught up in interest. Marines ought to be the principal in the world. The Marine Corps gives us the tools to deftly maneuver through life. Coincidentally, the Marine Corps also provides us with many obstacles to practice that maneuvering. If you apply the best of what the Marine Corps has taught you, you can be the change in the world. But tools are only useful if you use them, and you have to start small. It is therefore incumbent on each of us to practice micro-excellence. If we want to see macro-excellence in larger organizations, we have to practice micro-excellence in our own lives. Like anything worthwhile, this takes time. If you want to see a forest in 10 years, you'd better start planting today. And this isn't just good advice. This is necessity. My desire for all of you is to act on it before it becomes a regret. We owe it to the Marines who have gone before us and to the Marines who come after us if we want them to inherit anything worthwhile. It is no grand observation that many a proud organization has fallen not because somebody has struck it down, but because its bones became so brittle that it could no longer support itself. What I want to point out is that this doesn't happen overnight either. Unfortunately, harmful habits, like weeds, grow a lot more easily than healthy ones. The really bad news is that once they are fully grown, they don't produce anything. They just take up space and totally, totally ruin the field. All Marines are inextricably linked. Each Marine is either pulling the Marine Corps down or pulling it up. It matters, then, that each Marine practice excellence in their own life. Again, micro-excellence leads to macro-excellence. To my officer candidates, you are the Marines of the future you will find that there are enough problems to solve in the Marine Corps. As much as possible, try not to bring your own. The future of your Marines and the Corps at large depends on it. You will be granted some measure of authority much earlier than you expect. This is a grave and serious responsibility, and how prepared you are to handle it will matter. Look at your life now and begin to dismember the things that won't benefit the young men and women that will be in your charge. For 242 years, Marines have shown their mettle. 
if we want to see another 242 years, we need to show the same mettle in whatever we do. I pray for a prosperous and healthy year for our beloved Corps. Semper Fidelis. Okay, so this is the first news segment of the show. The idea here is that I will provide you a thought-provoking quote from history and my reflections on that quote. Today's quote is from American journalist Richard Harding Davis concerning the Marines. The quote is as follows. The Marines have landed and the situation is well in hand. This is a powerful quote because it summarizes what should happen when Marines arrive. In combat, in garrison, in diplomacy, in business, in civilian life, in whatever else, wherever a Marine is, it should be better there than it would be if that Marine wasn't there. We should be always ready and able to restore order and get things moving. Shot over. Shout out. This next segment is going to be a uh, short profile of a weapon that is relevant to the Marine Corps. This week's weapon is the Mameluke Sword, carried by Marine officers. As you can see, I've got mine behind me. Tradition has it that the Mameluke Sword was presented to First Lieutenant Presley O'Bannon by deposed ruler Hamet Karamanli for valor shown in winning the Battle of Derna Tripoli, which is in modern-day Libya, in April of 1805. The Battle of Derna was the final battle in the First Barbary War, which began in 1801 due to the abuse of commercial American ships by the Barbary pirates in and around the Mediterranean Sea. Eight Marines and a few hundred mercenaries, under the command of U.S. Army General William Eaton, marched more than 500 miles across Egypt and Libya before seizing the city, thanks in large part to the ferocity of the Marines. The Battle of Derna marked the first time that the U.S. flag was planted on foreign soil as a result of combat. The word Mameluk is a reference to the curved hilt of the sword, which was named so because the style of sword was commonly carried by the Mamluk, a warrior political class in Egypt and Syria from the 13th to the 19th centuries. The word Mamluk is an Arabic term for slave because Mamluks were typically young men bought to be placed into military service, commonly achieving high ranks and the military and political influence that came with them. Rounds complete. The last segment that I'm going to introduce today is a quick look at something that has added value to my life and might add value to yours, so I'm going to go ahead and share it. This week's Things I Like are these old-timey recruiting posters. Uh, as you can see, I haven't opened mine yet, but I'll show you in a minute which ones I got specifically. In this case, uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so you could get these for a uh, number of reasons, uh, but you'll definitely see them at uh, TBS, maybe at OCS, and maybe at uh, recruiter's office as well. They do make excellent gifts. Uh, here are the two that I got, and these are available for under $10 at postersinc.com, and I will leave the link in the description box. So that is it for today's show. As always, if you have any suggestions, opinions, or requests, anything you'd like to see me cover, leave that in the comment section below, and I will leave my email in the description box. Also, quick update is that I will plan to have the videos published for Monday morning. That way, there's a little bit more consistency. And finally, and as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer and dismiss some indiscriminate justice.